Today we're trying to make infinite squirrels and also gain infinite life, all on just a 14 rare budget. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Aphrodolith, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So this week, we're heading to Historic to see if we can make infinite squirrels with Rosie Kata Southlane in Scurry Oak, all on just a 14 rare budget. So let's talk about this deck, what we're trying to do, jump into some games and see if we can make some squirrels. So we're built around the new Lord of the Rings Uncommon, Rosie Cotton of Southlane. Rosie, when it ETBs, it makes a food token. And most importantly, when we create a token, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on a creature other than Rosie. So the way the combo works is we need Rosie in Scurry Oak. Scurry Oak is a three mana one two that when we put one or more plus one plus one counters on it, we make a one one green squirrel. So you probably see where this is going. If we get both of these cards, Rosie makes a food token, can put a counter on Scurry Oak. Scurry Oak will trigger to make a squirrel token. That token will trigger Rosie to put a counter on something and we'll choose Scurry Oak to make a squirrel and then we'll trigger Rosie, Scurry Oak, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until we make infinite squirrels in an infinitely big Scurry Oak, which should be able to kill our opponent. Hopefully we win right away by just beating down with Scurry Oak. Worst case, we have a huge mob of squirrels that we can use to kill our opponent with the next turn. We also we have a bunch of life gain synergies. So Heliod Suncrown is actually another combo piece with Scurry Oak. It's kind of hard mode combo. Uh, Heliod, when we gain life, we can put a counter on something. So the combo here is we need Heliod plus a Soul Sister, a creature that when a creature enters the battlefield, we gain life. So Soul Ward, Lunark Veteran, or Prosperous Innkeeper. Uh, so the combo is a three piece combo rather than a two piece combo. But essentially, if we have Scurry Oak, Heliod, and any Soul Sister, a creature comes into play, we gain a life with the Soul Sister. It triggers Heliod to put a counter on Scurry Oak, which will make a squirrel token, which will trigger the Soul Sister, which will trigger Heliod, which will trigger Scurry Oak, loop and loop and loop, infinite squirrels, infinite life as well in an infinitely big Scurry Oak. And since we're playing all this life gain stuff, we also get a kind of typical Soul Sister beatdown plan where we have Trellis, our Moon Dancer, and Voice of the Blessed, these creatures that grow whenever we gain life. So if we can stack up some Soul Worms and Lunar Veterans and Prosperous Incubators and Heliods, we just play these two drops and we gain a bunch of life one life repeatedly with our soul wardens and next thing you know voice of the blessed is a 12 12 flying indestructible vigilant creature trellis r is a 10 10 they scry through a deck to find our big payoffs so that's essentially the goal of those cards we also have most of our budget dedicated to two really important cards for finding our combo. Collected Company, Kayla's Reconstruction. These cards just dig deep in our library, six or seven cards deep, to grab two creatures, mana value three or less. So ideally, these cards are gonna find our combo pieces. The power of these cards, apart from just like flooding the board with creatures, is one of these cards, a single card, can find both of our combo pieces. In our dream world, we like turn two Prosperous and keep her to ramp, turn three Collected Company, hit Rosie, hit a Scurry Oak, go infinite on the spot, win the game. We can do the same thing with Kyla's Reconstruction, just a little more expensive. So really important for finding our combo pieces. Our mana base, that's where you can see the budget aspect of the deck. We're playing pretty much all tap lands, all uncommon or common lands, so it's a good way to help keep our budget down. There will be some games where our mana is a little bit slower than we like, but hopefully that's not too big of a deal. As far as the sideboard, selfless savior for protecting our creatures, fiend hunters, seal from existence for removal, apostle purifying light, relic of progenitus for graveyards, and that is Rosie's infinite squirrel combo. And that's our budget magic deck for this week. So let's jump into some games. See if we can make some infinite squirrels with Rosie and Scurry Oak. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Want to try to make infinite squirrels in paper? Well, you can snag all the cards you need from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Budget magic time. We are trying to make infinite squirrels this week <laughs> with the help of Rosie. And uh, this hand actually looks excellent. We need a land, but we have the Soul Sisters, we have the full combo, and a Coco. Other than needing one or two more lands, this is, oh no, is this Wizards? Oh, I feel like I never beat Wizards. All right, well, Coco Soul Sisters, Prosperous Innkeeper. Gain a little more life, and I think we need to save up our treasure instead of playing Veteran. Symmetry Sage number two. Yeah, this card's a lot better as a 3-3, three, three, or often a 3-3. Three, three. And consider 
Yup, yup, yup. Okay, so. This deck does have a lot of removal. Do we just run out Scurry Yug? Let's see what we draw. Another Innkeeper. <sighs> Let's just keep gaining life, I guess. We could run out Scurry Yug. Hope it lives. One of the issues with the combo, and this isn't like a deal breaker or anything, but people are wise to Scurry Yug. When people see a Scurry Yug, they expect that... <laughs> something scary is gonna happen because people don't usually play it fairly. So if we run it out, our opponent is gonna try to kill it. But it's not one of those, not one of those combo pieces that slips under the radar and people are like, oh, I didn't see that coming, oh, I'm dead now. And no, people, people expect Scurry Oak. If you're playing it, you're trying to do something a little bit busted with it. Opponent, Shivan Reef, sure, hits us down to 16. A snarl, okay, let's play the tap land. Do we scurry oak? Let's attack first. Hit you to 16. We're gonna run it out. I mean, there is some miraculous world where it lives. There's some world where it lives and we just play Rosie and go off like our opponent taps out for weird stuff. Could happen. Thankfully, this life gain is letting us take six a turn and not die. All right. Well, okay, Pony has the answer, but it is a temporary answer. Fading hope on the oak. Good description of our hopes of comboing. <laughs> they might be fading slightly. Oh, that gets in for six, sure. Well, 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 we draw another rosy. At some point, we're gonna fire off this Coco. If our opponent taps down for something, we'll Coco. And we could, I mean, we have a lot of combo pieces in hand, but we could still just Coco. Ooh, okay, Snapcaster. Well, it's Coco time. Come on. Well, Voice of the Blessed. And we have two Rosies in hand, so I guess another Soul Sister. This Voice of the Blessed is going to get really huge really quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a casual two mana nine nine. Oh, just kidding. Ten ten. Two mana ten ten. We need what? Two more counters for indestructible. Although indestructible doesn't really matter because if our opponent's gonna deal with it, it's gonna be with fading hope. I don't think they're gonna kill it. If they have a way to deal with it, it's gonna be bouncing it. And we're also Oh, another Snapcaster. Okay. Although fading hope's not even that good of an answer. Because we just do it again. Opponent bounces, curls. Somehow, we are taking these massive attacks and we've stacked up enough life gain creatures that we're still at 22. We're taking taking so much damage and it's not killing us. Opponent, fading hope, hits us, goes attacking. Yeah, we'll just take it. We don't really want to kill Snapcasters because then Lurus can replay them. Shiv and refer, opponent passes. Ooh, Trilosar might be better than voice here. So it doesn't block the flyers, but scrying is nice. Oh, reprieve. Okay, that's actually pretty sweet. Okay, okay, a little white remand action. I'm not as hyped about playing reprieve in, in decks that have blue mana because people are expecting the counters, but there's no remand in uh, on arena. So this is arena remand. Ugh, expressive iteration. We have five five soul sisters on the battlefield at the moment. Every creature is so much life. I just wish, I wish we'd draw some mana. Being able to do more than one thing a turn would be helpful at some point. Opponent finds a wizard's lightning, takes down the soul warden. Are things slipping away? Opponent, untap land down to 11. I wonder if our opponent should have thrown those at our face. Like that's six more damage. I I think it would have been better to throw it at our face. Bound it hits us. Down to six. Okay, we do draw land, which is actually huge. So we invoice with the blessed. Gain some life. Grow a big flyer. Trellisara. Gain some life. What are we scrying for, Coco? Well, not another Trellisar, that's for sure. Not a Plains now. All right. Uh, definitely not a Radiant Grove. All right, well, I mean, that's... Uh, Voice of the Blessed back, it's an 8-8. Eight, eight, and we're up to 12. Opponent. Ooh, Mentor's Guidance. All right. All right, double opt. That's pretty decent. Hmm. 
to the top. Oh, that's frightening. If our opponent can deal with both creatures, we die, right? Oh, fading hope. Okay. Are we dead? Hold, Trellisara. Hold. To the top. Uh, okay, this, oh, we're not dead. We're not dead. Fragment reality. <laughs> Kills Trellisara, but we get a soul sister, because that's the only one drops in our deck. Back up to 15. Yes, not dead yet. Not dead yet. Three is not a lot of life, though. That is not a lot of life. We draw land. Well, play the land. Voice of the Blessed gain some life. Is there a way we survive this? I feel like our opponents hit us for like 50 damage this game. <laughs> they probably actually have. I guess we got a Scurry Oak at this point. You need the Scurry Oak out first before the Rosie comes down to uh, most easily combo. Well, all right, back up to 11. No attacks. <laughs> I mean, we actually have the combo kill for now. Oh, Belmore. Okay, no spells. How about no spells? Oh, double opt again. Does this mean we're dead? Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So Belmore can't attack. 4, 8, 12, 16. Scries to the bottom. One more spell and we're definitely dead, right? Well, I guess it depends on if the voice is around. Voice can eat one attacker. Another symmetry sage, sure. What's that last card? Well, last. Oh no. Okay, fragment reality, but we get a soul. We get a soul sister. We get a soul sister. Does that keep us alive? Can we block in a way that we keep our scurry oak is the question. All right, soul warden. Gain some life. Everything has trample. Opponent attacks. Oh, we lose the scurry oak, don't we? Yeah. Block, 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 block. We go to one? Okay. Scurry oak, but that doesn't do it. Oh, so close. Oh, if we had one more mana, we could just go infinite. Well, run out the phantom. Run out the scurry oak. I mean, we basically need our opponent to not have a spell. If they can't trigger their stuff, lure. Oh my god, did they not have a spell? Cemetery Sage. It's either the slow roll or they actually don't have a spell. Or, oh my god, it's creepy. Oh my god, we're gonna do. Oh, my, wow! I cannot believe we won this game. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna auto stack our triggers here going into this combo. <laughs> Opponent gets it for one, which is fine. Is Ro- No, 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 no. Okay, Rosie time. Rosie time. Yes! I cannot believe it. I cannot believe. I can't believe we beat Wizards. I can't- I mean, we- I don't know what to say. Our opponent dealt like 60 damage to us this game. But in the end, Rosie and Screeo come through. <laughs> they come through. Oh, I never beat this deck. We don't have a ton in our sideboard. We can bring in the, the Fiend Hunters for a little removal. Do a little trimming around the edges. I mean, we just want to do that again. Combo and we're good. That's it. That's it. That's all. That's all we need to do. Run it like that. Our opponent's deck did its thing. An opponent's deck is one of the scariest and best decks in historic like it is a top tier deck and somehow the soul that was a soul sister win like yes the combo was what actually won us the game but we would have never ever ever survived without all those soul sisters like we were down to one like we needed every single soul sister trigger through that entire game to be able to stay alive long enough to to uh assemble the combo and win on to game number two in this hand looks amazing <laughs> uh we have we have combo potential for days here uh and our fortified village comes into play untapped <laughs> soul lord and go so we have the rosy scurryo combo we also have heliod scurryo combo which if we have a soul sister like soul warden also makes infinite squirrels well, Radiant Grove, get in for one. So we have, uh, we gotta, we gotta be careful with the Scurry Oak, basically. We have multiple rosy, rosy halves of our combo. We gotta be, gotta be careful with the Scurry Oak, though, because if that dies, we're sad. Opponent, ooh, steals a Soul Warden. Well, even more untapped fortified villages. I think we're actually just gonna Fiend Hunter our own Soul Warden. <laughs> Looks a little bit weird, but 
essentially this means if our opponent ever kills a fiend hunter we get it back and i don't really expect this fiend hunter to be a permanent answer expressive iteration for our opponent finds a land and something else well, we are drawing lots of lands. Let's run out Heliod. Get in, hit ya. So we can't go infinite with Heliod without a Soul Warden on the battlefield. Or one of the Soul Sisters. Any any of them work. All right, Dread Horde Arcanist. Symmetry Sage. We could go infinite with Ro... Oh, 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 oh. All right, that's the Soul Warden. Uh, the question is, do we go for it? Pono only has one mana up. They could have Wizard's Lightning. I mean, this might be as good as it gets. Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to go for it. Scurry Oak. Gain a life. Trigger Heliod. Counter on Scurry Oak. Yes. Make a squirrel. And do it again. And do it again. Infinite life, infinite squirrels. And so we don't win right now this turn. But we do make a huge amount of squirrels and a huge Scurry Oak. And for our opponent to survive this, they're going to need to wrath our board and deal with the Scurry Oak, which that's a lot to ask. That's a lot to ask. We'll see. Maybe they just scoop at some point. All right. Well, keep doing it. Scurry Oak, Scurry Oak. I think we at least got to go far enough that our Scurry Oak is a one-shot kill and our Squirrels are a one-shot kill. We got to make sure we're in a position where our opponent needs all of those things to, to survive their turn. And we're going to have a lot of life. Like, we have a lot of life that... Our opponent's not going to kill us anytime soon. All right, Scurry Oak, go, 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 go. How long does our opponent let us combo before they <laughs> before they get tired of it and scoop it up? Well, uh, Scurry Oak, yes, and gain some life and make a squirrel and do it again. <laughs> life our Oak, make a squirrel. <clears throat> kind of like Hitter's Monster All Guard, apparently. <laughs> it's basically Soul Sister Splinter Twin. <laughs> I think we finally found found a way to make uh, Soul Sisters work. <laughs> a card that's good in it, and a bonus scoops it up, and we beat Wizards somehow, some way. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Well, I think we got a mulligan that one. This one, tap lands for literal days, but. Eh, Soul Warden, I, I, we knew the Soul Sisters thing. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good combo hand, but it seems like a decent uh, a decent Soul Sisters hand. Two Soul Sisters and a Voice of the Blessed. Is Rosie good in Soul Sisters? Maybe that's the actual question. <laughs> All right, even more Soul Sisters. Well, let's get down Voice of the Blessed. But as Delighted Halfling, interesting. I wonder what, hmm, I wonder what they're doing. Growth Spiral. Oh, and misses the land. That's brutal. Uh, well, we will continue to have a Snarly Mana Base. Prosperous Innkeeper. Although, it might not even matter. I think we just run out this Lunark Veteran and make a big bo Voice of the Blessed. And if our opponent doesn't have removal, like, that is a 6-6 six, six Flying Vigilance that's going to continue to grow. And since we have Soul Warden, it grows when our opponent plays a creature. And wow. Okay. Easy mode. <laughs> All right. Rosie. Soul Sisters. Busted when your opponent can't get past two lands. Well, we didn't really get to see anything. So let's run it back. So Delighted Halfling cares about legends. It's got to be five color legend ramp. Sand can use another land or two, but two Soul Sisters, combo piece, two Cocos. If we get the mana to cast our Cocos, the sand's actually like really good. This hand, we would be happy if we drew three lands in a row, I think. <laughs> we are in the draw, which is helpful here. Opponent going to six, sure. All right, Triome. Actually, so Prosperous Innkeeper is not a land, but wow, and our Snarl came into play untapped. Then never. <laughs> It's a day of it's a national holiday, day of celebration. Fortified Village actually came into play untapped. <laughs> Ring the bells. Oh, well, it plays more lands. Uh, Prosperous Innkeeper is actually really nice. That's why I started to say before I got distracted by the snarls. Innkeeper ramping us with the treasure gets us to the Cocos and the reconstructions. Yeah, fixing their mana, sure, 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 Frozen Crossroads. So the question is, do we play Scurry Oak to set up for the combo? If we play Scurry Oak, all we have to hit is a Rosie to go infinite. Or do we fire off Coco? That's actually tough. Opponent does have mana up. Let's attack first. Yeah, let's Scurry Oak. The other upside, I think, to running out Scurry Oak is we don't have to spend our treasure. In our dream world, we draw an untapped land for Coco and save the treasure for reconstruction, which is going to need the white mana. 
and is very expensive. All right, opponent, how do you feel about a... Don't worry about it. It's just a one-two. <laughs> All right. Opponent's going to make her scurry oak disappear. That is completely fair. Uh, one of the downsides of this combo, and it's not... I don't know if even know if it counts as a downside, but most people know scurry oak's a combo piece at this point, so you don't get a lot of surprise value. People are rightly... Wow, Tamio Field Researcher. Oh, maybe our opponent's super friends. Delighted Halfling would make sense in Super Friends. Well, hmm. So if we deal combat damage, our opponent draws cards. Yeah. Let's just let's just uh, set up for the future again. Scurry Oak gain some life. Not even gonna bother to attack. We're not gonna let our opponent draw. Hopefully our opponent taps out, and hopefully this Coco finds a Rosie. Yeah. Then we get to O'Donnell our way to victory. Opponent Nissa. Nissa. Sure. Nissa. I do like three mana Nissa or X mana Nissa. Opponent takes up Tamio again. Sure. 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 Well. Okay. You never know with Coco. You never know. This is gonna range from completely sad to win us the game. Opponent's gonna scry. Thankfully our opponent's tapped out, so we don't have to worry about interaction ruining our combo. So we are good to go for it. Six cards deep, plus we get our draw step. We could just draw Rosie. Trella Zara. Well, all right, here goes. Collect a company. Show us a Rosie. Ha ha, okay, there's a Rosie. So take the Rosie and I guess it really doesn't matter. Heliad's probably best to make our stuff infinitely big. Okay, so. Rosie comes into play, makes a token, puts a counter on Scurry Oak. That makes Scurry Oak make a token, which triggers Rosie to put a counter on Scurry Oak. So this is going to make an infinitely big Scurry Oak. And since we have Soul Sisters, gain infinite life. And actually, it makes our other creatures infinitely big, too, because of Heliod triggering when we gain life. So essentially, we win. So uh, all we got to do, really, our opponent has no blockers. So all we really need to do is grow Scurry Oak to... 17 power, not even technically, because we attack with other stuff, but just make a huge scurry oak and win. So yeah, that I mean, this is why you play the deck. It's it's the uh, Soul Sister Splinter Twin essentially. <laughs> Soul Sister Splinter Twin, two cards, go infinite. Hopefully win the game. Uh, if our opponent could chump like scurry oak, well I guess he'd have to chump all of our creatures here because of Heliod, but there is a chance that we could combo and not win, although. Things would have to go pretty bad. We'd have to like combo, make a million squirrels, gain a million life, and then our opponent just untap in wrath, and then we cry. <laughs> but then hopefully the million life means we can't die. Well, okay, we will keep doing this. 17 power, that's good enough. We'll put the counter on something else. Now we gotta do the Heliod triggers, which none of this really matters. There's no, I don't think there's any way for this not to work. So grow some random stuff. And we could keep doing this forever, we just, don't need to because we have lethal now. Well, that actually went pretty well. Coco, Coco was good that game. Eh, all right. <laughs> Infinite squirrels, got him, got him. Budget magic time. We are trying to combo off with a Rosie in Historic this week. 15 rare budget infinite squirrel combo <laughs> and this hand actually looks pretty good i mean so we got a we got a souls at technically it's soul sisters right but we have a soul sister we have the rosie we have a heliod and then hopefully kayla's reconstruction can find a scurry oak see what our opponent's up to but reasonable reasonable starting hand and <laughs> all of our lands come into play untapped about it reservage thicket oh god kemba's outfitters okay uh well if they have Colossus Hammer in hand, we're probably dead. Yeah, that just makes an equipment in hand cost one to equip, which is not good for us, opponent. Don't you be looking. Mm. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Hooray. Okay. Uh, well, that's a hammer. I guess we block. <laughs> uh, so our chance of winning here is very, very slim. So we play the land. We get back Lunar Veteran to Chomp. We stay at 20. Next turn, we top deck Scurry Oak. Take 12. Next turn, there are no next turns. Now we have no chance of winning because because the Outfitter gets Trample. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Chomp block, well, we weren't gonna draw Scurry Oak anyway. Okay. At least that was mercifully quick. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in Historic Hammer Time, because of Outfitters is actually legitimately scary if you 
if you have the right draw. I mean, so the way to disrupt it is removal. We're just not really a removal deck. That's not our thing. We're squirrel. We're playing squirrel tribal, essentially. Squirrels don't care about removal. They just want nuts, I guess. Uh, all right. Well, we have our sideboard removal, Fiend Hunter. Man is a little clunky, but I mean, again, we have Scurry Oak and we have Heliod and we have Collective Company. So if we could somehow live a bit. Okay, Ornithopter. Outfitter again. All right, this looks familiar. Equipment hand perpetually cost one. I wonder, I wonder what equipment that might be. What equipment would you want to equip for one opponent? <laughs> sort of. Fortune front? Wow, okay, nothing. Opponent just hits us. Well, if our opponent doesn't have a scary equipment, then this is kind of fine. Cigar is age, sure. So more free equipping. Well, play the land, play the scurry oak. Well, come on, Rosie. Or land to collected company to find Rosie, and then we go infinite, and then we then we win. Infinite squirrels should beat our opponent. Like, we can block, right? Opponent goes to combat. Oh god. Belt of giant. Wait, that's another hammer? There's two hammers in this? Oh god, okay. Apparently there's two Colossus hammers. That's bad hammer, but still, like, <laughs> that is another Colossus hammer. Opponent, more outfitters. Let's draw Rosie. So that equips for one. It doesn't give evasion though. So I guess we can, we can survive another turn, right? Yeah, so they can equip that, but if we play Fiend Hunter, get rid of the Ornithopter, because we can't block the Flyer, but if we get rid of the Ornithopter, they only have ground creatures. We get a squirrel for jump blocking. So, okay, I mean, we're still not in good shape, but in theory, we survive and we're drawing live for land for Coco or Rosie to go infinite. So we still got a shot somehow. I assume they're belting up one of these outfitters. Yeah, perpetually making it cost one's kind of, kind of bonkers. Portable hole. That is kind of ridiculous. Unlike modern hammer time, where if you deal with a creature, they like Cigar does eight doesn't let you re-equip it. Just equipping for one forever is really strong. All right, well, we got a chump. Land for Coco, this is our hope. This is the game. It comes down to this top deck. Land for Coco for Rosie. We draw a cheaty land, but that one life's not gonna save us this turn. Well, in theory, okay. Okay, like that is not good. We really wanted to cast a collected company, but we can Tralisara, gain a life, Heliod to the bottom, chump block with Tralisara, Coco next turn. Or our opponent will draw Shadow Sphere again and we'll scoop it up. That is an example of one of the downsides of being budget. Often the tap lands are fine. You can kind of play around them, but boy, sometimes, sometimes they are brutal. And that was one of the brutal cases. Budget, oh God, <clears throat> budget mulligan time, <laughs> budget magic time. We are trying to make a, some infinite squirrels with Rosie this week and yeah, what do we put to the bottom? Probably re hmm. <sighs> reconstruction is just so much mana. I don't know if we're going to get to it. Plus we have Coco. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. So our hand's not horrible. We got the Rosie. We got the Coco. Innkeeper can ramp into stuff. The problem is our opponent uh, appears to be Mono Green Devotion and they have Leyline, which is incredibly explosive. All their mana dorks tap for two, which is not good for us. That is bad news. Opponent, tap land. Yora. Okay, and then untaps the mana dork. I mean, the question is, do they have a payoff? Like, they have all the mana in the... Oh, we really wanted to land there. We can play Rosie, but we'd have to spend our treasure? I think we just Soul Warden. We need the treasure. Our most realistic way of winning, I think, is just gonna be to jank our opponent out with the combo. We're probably gonna need Coco to find it. All right, opponent plays a land, sure. No payoffs, Cavalier of Thorns. Well, that's not as bad as some things, but it is good. Finds a Nykthos. Draws a card. Okay, I mean, we're not dead yet. Part of the power of our deck is we do have infinite squirrels. <laughs> and infinite squirrels, if we can do it, beats a lot of, oh, that's gonna be bad. Grizzled Huntmaster to tutor from the sideboard. Uh, sure. Opponent. Exiles a Huntmaster. Gets to tutor a creature from their sideboard. Another Kiora. Okay. Oh God, she's yeah, 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 yeah. City escape leveler. Well, okay. Draw the land, Coco. Hit the infinite combo, win. Or another Rosie. 
All right. <laughs> I think we're a little behind on board. <laughs> Just a little. I'm actually not sure why why Leyline is legal in this format. Leyline uh, Leyline's actually banned in Pioneer. It's because of Mono Green Devotion. Well, we're bringing in some Fiend Hunters, which at least can kind of answer things. The goal is to combo. Like, that's how we beat this deck is going infinite. We're not going go to go toe, toe to toe with them. Oh, come on, deck. Oh, okay. So we fit the, the mulligan, the mulligan part of our matches. Uh, do we put voice to the bottom or we have two scurry oaks. Let's put one scurry oak to the bottom. Okay. So we have a combo piece. We have a soul warden. So we need lands and Rosie or enough lands to Kayla's reconstruction to find Rosie one or the other about it. But who says you? No ley line this game is nice at least. Opponent should be a little oh, another Kayla's reconstruction. Okay. Well, we're gonna attack. I think our soul sister is worth less than our opponent's mana dork here. Wisely does not block. Tap land. Elvish Mystic. Well, we gain a life. Opponent hits us. Oh no. Well, I mean, Mono Green is a really tough deck anyway. We also have not run very well this match. We've had some severe mulligans. Oh dear. That might actually just do it. I don't think there's any way we're beating. Yeah. Well, there's definitely no way we're beating this hand with no lands. That's magic. Some Sometimes you play it, sometimes you don't. And that was a don't. Mythic 1338, Ponanda, pretty pretty high ranked. This hand looks fine. I like that we have multiple Coco effects, and I love that Fortified Village against against the odds can actually come into play on tap tier. Ponant Bant control maybe. Well, let's run out Trellisara. Oh, okay, Rattle Chain. So Ponant Bant Spirit. So basically, blue white splashing Coco most likely. Uh, opponent planes. Ethereal Escort. Whenever ETBs are attacks, choose a card in your hand to give life link perpetually. Sure. I mean, we don't really care about some incidental life gain. Run out the Heliod, pass the turn. Well, if we can resolve Coco and Kayla's reconstruction, I mean, we could theoretically just combo next turn. That is the power of these cards. They can just find both combo pieces. Opponent Skyclave. Gonna hit the Heliod. Mm hmm. All right. That means our opponent's tapped out. Yeah, life link doesn't really matter because if we win, we are gonna win infinitely. Well, fire off the Coco. I don't even know if we want the Rosie. So we have no Scurry Oak. Might be better, huh? Might be better just take Voice of the Blessed? Oh, Rosie is a combo piece though. Voice of the Blessed getting flying seems irrelevant. Yeah, let's, uh, so this isn't helping us go infinite really, but Voice of the Blessed, we'll keep, <laughs> We'll keep that Rosie. Voice of the Blessed gaining flying is pretty big. So we might just be on the Soul Sister beatdown plan. Hit you down to 18. Run out the Soul Warden. Uh, I guess we should have done that first, technically. <laughs> Would have hit you for a little more damage. All right, uh, Rosie stays on top. How many answers do you have? Normally, Spirit's good at answering things on the stack. Not as good at answering things on the board, usually. And they already used a Skyclave. Opponent, Supreme Phantom. <laughs> I do love Soul Warden. Just the the fact that it triggers on our opponent's creatures is really good. All right, down to 14 temporarily. Well, play the land and opponent's got no blue mana. So Coco number two, Kayla's reconstruction. Okay, there's a combo. Rosie Scurrio, put him into play. And, oh, that, that does it. So Rosie, trigger, counter on Scurry Oak. <laughs> Make a squirrel, do it again. <laughs> and opponent scoops it up and uh yeah i mean that was that was good that was very good we'll bring in the fiend hunters do a little trimming i mean that's the upside of having a combo in your deck even when your opponent has a bunch of flyers and they're like doing their thing you always have this get out of jail free card where you're just like oh, okay kills reconstruction hit the combo like sorry <laughs> can you deal with infinite squirrels and infinite life spirits like <laughs> hopefully not I am a little scared of spirits because I do know they have a lot of counters. So I think Kayla's reconstruction gets a little worse. Coco's good because you can cast an instant speed, but reconstruction just tapping out for like five or six main phase, kind of tricky. Sure. Tap land, tap land time. Forest is actually nice here. So we can play the tap land. 
Potential. Ooh, spirit. Okay. Well, there's the Lord. Yeah, let's let's get the tap lands out of our hand. Run out the Soul War and play the Blossoming Sands. Cheating, gaining a life with a land. <laughs> did did Blossoming Sands break it? All right, opponent has a portable hole. Sure. Well, Soul Warden one down. So, uh, Soul Warden Trellisara. Get our scry on. Uh, yeah, I think we need the land here. So land, Coco's, Scurry Oaks. Those are, those are what we'd like to find the most. I guess we really don't need, after land number four for Coco, we don't immediately need more lands. Opponent hits us down to 20. Three mana, could be a spell queller. Yeah, let's play Rosie. We have two Rosies anyway, so if one gets quelled, yeah. All right. Well, the spell queller triggers our Soul Warden. Trellisara lets us scry. Yeah. Soul Warden's fine. We can play multiple things next turn. And it grows the Trellis. Like, if this Trellisara lives, it might just get there by itself. Opponent goes attacking. Ugh. Coco. That is Coco mana. Well, run out the Soul Warden. Spell Queller number two. Is a little awkward that we got two forests here. Let's put an innkeeper to the bottom. So we can't Fiend Hunter. We can get down a Rosie, which is something at least. I guess just Trellisara? We're never gonna grow this soul warrant another innkeeper. Okay, well, apparently the magic gods really want us to draw an innkeeper next turn. <laughs> so no use in fighting it. Hit you to five. Come on, no removal. The Trellisara turns into the abyss here if if it lives, our opponent's gonna have to start chumping. Oh, Skyclave. Okay, that's that's a good one. Well, huh. So what's our new plan for winning? Opponent hits us. Somehow we're still we were still at 21 just from all this life gain. Voice of the Blessed. Get a counter. Innkeeper. Get a few counters. I guess we just go all in on Voice of the Blessed. We need one more counter for it to get flying. And then at least it can block. This attack's gonna hurt a bit. Opponent hits us. Down to 11. If we're gonna draw a cheaty, uh, tap land, the cheaty land's the best one here. At least it gains us a life. Which works with Voice of the Blessed. All right, Fiend Hunter. Mm, no, do they actually have Coco. This game, we are getting out coco Game one, we out coco our opponent. This game, this game, we are getting out coco by spirits. Ooh, Drog Skull. That's not great. So now we have to hit the Drog Skull? I mean, Voice of the Blessed gets, wow, that was actually a really, really big hit. So, yeah, we have to target the Drog Skull because of Hexproof, and the Shackle Geist lets our opponent tap down the voice. Those, yeah, those were good ones. Those were good hits for our opponent. The Shackle Geist, actually both of them, really, but the Shackle Geist is going to mean it's very difficult to win by attacking. Maybe impossible here. I mean, that's a big voice of the Blessed. <laughs> Getting bigger from the Cheaty Lands. But can we do anything with it? I don't think we're dead this turn, right? 3, 6, 9, 12, 13. 13. Yeah, so we're not just done on board. Bonnet, land. Oh, God. Another drug go Wait, are we dead now? 4, 8, 12, 16, 17, 18. Oh, the <laughs> our soul sister keeping us alive. We want our opponent to swing out here. Maybe our opponent doesn't notice our food, and they just swing out, and we get to get to get them on the backswing. We need them to tap enough that the, we need them not to be able to use Shacklegeist, I think, to have to have a shot here. There's not really a reason for our opponent to go for it though. Like what's the best, I mean, I guess there is. The risk for our opponent is we combo. So they do want to kill us as quick as possible. Unfortunately, the food's on the battlefield, so not gonna be easy for our opponent to miss. All right, opponent hits us for 12. Yeah, it seems like a good attack. Leaves back enough of stuff, uh, enough stuff to tap and have an extra blocker. It's a very safe attack. Yeah, Fortified Village. Not coming into play to have this time. All right, this time we draw the Cocos. <laughs> it seems like that's how this matchup goes. Whoever draws the Cocos ends up winning. On to game number three, we do get to be on the play, which is actually kind of excellent. I mean, this is a good Soul Sisters hand. I'll give it that. Three Soul Sisters Trellisara. Uh, opponent plays the land. Ooh, planes. 
Yeah, let's just get down Trellis Sorrow while your opponents tap down. Next turn, we can double Soul Sisters Cheaty Land, make Trellis Sorrow big. Supreme Phantom. Well, number one. Number two, this Trellis Sorrow is about to go off. Number two, counter Scry Land to the bottom. Blossoming Sands, our budget mana, paying dividends. I think we keep Trellisara. So Trellisara is legendary, but in this setup with three Soul Sisters, if Trellisara lives, it's gonna win us the game. If it doesn't live, we want another one. I guess Shackle Guys does kind of punish that, doesn't it? Hmm. All right, if they have Shackle Guys, we're gonna strike to the bottom. Theory out the window. <laughs> Disregard, ooh, that we will keep though, that's a Coco. Okay, we could just, we could win right now. Come on, Coco, come on, Coco. Let's make our opponent tap. Scurry Oak Rosie, infinite squirrel win. Can we hit it? Play the forest, main phase it while your opponent step down. And that's a Scurry Oak, that's a Rosie. That is infinite squirrels, that is infinite life, that is an infinitely big trellis. Sara in Scurry Oak. Also infinite scrying, not that that really matters, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we're good. I think we're good. <laughs> Squirrels beat the spirits. <laughs> That's what Sauron should have done then to Lord of the Rings. When the, when the ghost people or spirits came to save the day, they should have went for the squirrels. <laughs> we found the answer. <laughs> so technically we don't win this turn. So I guess theoretically it's possible our opponent untaps and wraths. Seems unlikely. And even if they do, we have infinite life. An opponent apparently can't do it and scoops it up and that's the infinite squirrel win. Whew, that was a good one. Sweet, sweet. So what did we learn this week about Rosie's infinite squirrel combo in historic on just a 14 rare budget? In the deck, performed pretty well. We ended up going three and two in our matches, which for a deck on a really tight budget and Mythic on Arena, we're gonna take that. That's a really, really solid performance. And I think the deck is actually kind of good. I do think we got a little lucky not to play against Control. Uh, control is like by far the hardest matchup. Like a deck full of counters and removal and sweepers gonna be really, really tough for our deck to actually beat. It's gonna be hard to assemble the combo, hard to win with the backup plan, but we played against some really good decks. Like we took on Is It Wizards. That match was ridiculous. And we were able to just like stay alive with our life gain effects and kind of just muddle around and then eventually combo off and win the game. And I think that's the power of this deck. Like we're kind of a Soul Sisters deck and we did see some games where we played like a Soul Sister deck where we're just playing Soul Wardens and Prosperous Innkeepers and growing Trellis Aras and Voice of the Blessed. So we have that plan, which is a pretty good plan. But then we also have the thing I love most about this deck, the ability just to combo off out of nowhere by surprise. The problem with the Soul Sister plan is it takes a while to actually close out the game. Like sure, you're growing creatures and gaining a bunch of life, but your opponent can just chump block and kill your stuff. The power of Rosie and Scurry Oak is out of the blue without your opponent expecting it. You just win the game with infinite squirrels and infinitely big creatures. And that has a really, really interesting dimension, I think, to his Soul Sister style deck. You still get the power of the life gain. You still get this sweet voice of the blessed Trellisaurus synergies, but then you also get the, oops, I just randomly won the game out of nowhere aspect. So if you like life gain decks, and I know arena players love life gain decks because I run into them way more than I should, this is the direction that I would go. As far as the budget, like this is a pretty functional budget deck. If you look at our main deck, there is really not much outside of the lands that would have to be cut. Like this is pretty close to the optimal build of the deck, I think. Like sure, there's probably some little things around the edges that you could tweak, but really the non-lands in the main deck, if I was playing on an infinite infinite budget and could play any card I wanted to, it would look very, very close to the same. Where you get upgrades, if you're willing to splurge a bit, is in the mana base and also in the sideboard. That's where you can really see the, the budget aspect of the deck. The mana base, we're playing zero rares and uh, the rare lands in our colors are just strictly better than the uncommon and common lands because they're gonna come into play untapped most of the time. And we did see a couple of games where the tapness of our lands was a problem. We had that one game in specific where we needed to cast a Coco to try to find a combo piece and win the turn before we died. But for that to happen, we needed to draw land and we drew a tap land and we couldn't Coco. So that's the downside of the budget. There will be games that you might have otherwise won if your lands were untapped. They end up losing because your lands are tapped. Uh, so that's the easiest place to upgrade. And the nice thing about upgrading mana bases is 
it really doesn't matter what rare lands you play like there is a hierarchy like shock lands and fast lands are better than pathways and they're better than you know some of the other lands there is a hierarchy to dual lands but really it, any of the uncommon and common lands in the deck if you take them out and replace them with any of the rare lands you have in your collection it's gonna upgrade the deck so it's not like you have to go out and buy 12 rare lands and spend all your wild cards to make uh, to make the deck better to improve the deck if you have four rare lands in these colors in your collection take out four uh, radiant groves and add in those four rare lands if you have eight do the same thing if you have 12 so that's what you're looking for as far as upgrades the other place you can really upgrade is in the sideboard like rest in peace over relic of progenitus and uh and over apostle of purifying light there's much better removal spell options that we could play over like fiend hunter like skyclave apparition is essentially just a strictly upgraded fiend hunter so those are the other kind of changes you can make but overall I like the deck. It works really well. If you like life gain, if you love squirrels, I think this is a really good budget starting option for Historic on Magic Arena and it's got some upgrade potential as well. So anyway, that is Rosie's Infinite Squirrel Combo. That's been our budget magic for today. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon.